Vincent, one major positive from Tuesday night was Jay Rodriguez back amongst the goals. Yeah. Great to see him playing again. Yeah, and, and the performance, but uh, Jay is, uh, is an important figure in, in the dressing room and, and in the team. And, you know, we've been talking about players that can help improve the team. I think we're going to need not just him, but other ones as well. But he, he definitely adds to us. He scored 22 goals the last time he was in the Championship with West Brom, so he could be your scorer. Yeah, with Jay, it's just we've we've just got to manage it and 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 keep him fit, keep him happy. It's um, <clears throat> what you saw in the last game is, is 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 what he's got in, in him. But we have to uh, with Jay just just find the moments for him to be to be at his best. The quality of the goal against Tull just illustrates what you're trying to achieve here. I think. Well, I'll take ugly goals as well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, it's really not about that. But um, um, like I told you before, I, I, I do have a strong desire to 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 have a high goal scoring team. But I know that this is not something that comes straight away. But I do have the the the, the idea as well that you can score from any phase in football. And 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 then this is one of these moments where um, you know we we, we try and work to a solution to, to, to get into dangerous areas all the time. Burnley have gone behind in the last three games. That, that's been frustrating for you. Yeah, but I think it goes a bit hand in hand. You know, you, you, we've had such positive performances, but then um, we've been on the knife edge all the time because, you know, we've, we've not been able to put any distance between us and anyone that we've played so far. Um, although you would say that in terms of um, how the game might have looked or in terms of stats we, that, that we were on top. We've not been able to do it in terms of results. And, and then that's, that's, that's where we're at at the moment. And for that reason, we need to keep our concentration high all the time. And, and if it's 1-0, it's 1-0 and we need to keep it that way. Burnley are seen as a big club now, obviously in this division. Uh, when the opposition get behind the ball, it can be difficult to, to break them down. Yeah, I, I think, look, we've... We've earned it as, as well a little bit, you know. It's not just that we've that teams have gone and sat behind the ball because we've um, we've come up with big names. You know, we we sold all our most of our best players. This is largely a new squad, so um, you're of course a bigger name because you come from the Premier League. But in in general, there's a lot of new faces in this squad. But I think we earned it by. Like I said, making runs in behind, making sure that we we stay tidy on the ball, making sure that we're extremely aggressive when we lose the ball and recover the ball quickly. Um, and then that picture starts to appear. Blackpool next. We've just been talking about Lancashire. It's a Lancashire derby. You'll be looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I've always I've always lived for the hobbies. So, but it wasn't no matter the shirt I've I've, I've worn in the past, and um, it gives the fans as well something extra to to look forward to. These games have always got a little bit more pressure on them as well, but it's something that that has to make us grow. And and I hope that the team will be out there with with a positive performance, and then on top of the performance, the result. Good luck, Vince. Thank Good you. Luck. Afternoon. Yeah, just following on, on on obviously Blackpool this weekend, they've lost a couple of key players to injury in Patino and, and Fiorini in the midfield. Just how sort of big an impact do you think that can have on the game? Um, it depends on the depth of, of their squad at the moment. I, I can't really judge for for that as much. You know, I'm still getting to know the league. I mean, I know that in, in our case, we uh, we're looking to be strong, whether it's against you know the best 11 of Blackpool we wish for them to have the best 11 and, and for us we, we just look at ourselves and, and we just want to be strong in that game What have you made of their sort of starts of the season obviously you'll have sat down and, and watched them I'm sure but how do you sort of assess them and, and, and the way the game might go on, on Saturday um, No look it's I mean we've seen it with the Watford game Team, teams can change on, on, on a day so um I'm not going to get too too attached to 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 what they do, but it, look in general, it's been a team that's been uh, getting results by by being compact and organised, and 
Um, there is a good, there's, there's a good um, idea behind what they try and do on the ball as well, and that makes them dangerous to play against. But um, it's a home game where we're, we're, we're wanting to reward ourselves with the results that we, we've kind of missed out on for whatever reason so far. And, um, and it's, it's something we're looking forward to. First goal, always important, I know. But is it perhaps even more important for Burnley at the moment, given the way you play in that it will then force the opposition to perhaps do a little bit different and, and not be able to sit, sit in as much? Yeah, I mean, I've always said it, it really depends. My, if, I, if I could write a script, I would always start it with, um, with what we've had so far um, in terms of what we got so far in terms of, of the opposition. Not, not every team is able to set, set a low block either, you know, so that's it's a myth. There's, there's a lot of teams who are not comfortable doing that. Some teams are, and usually you spot them easily, but not everyone is Atletico Madrid either. <laughs> And and so it is something, but then again, if it's part of what you're used to, then you become better at it as, as well. And you find the gaps and you get through it. And once you've unlocked that, and it takes a little bit of time, it's never been different, but once you unlock it, you get good at unlocking it and, and it stays that way. But it's difficult for, for other, other teams then to, to turn it around. You know, you can't go from low block to high block to high. It, it doesn't work that way. So we have to stay... Um, um, we have to stay at it, at it, and then trust that with time, you know, it's it's going to be our strengths to to play against these teams. I, I wouldn't have it any different. On the transfer front, I'm sorry to have to ask you again. And yeah, you, you, there's no one over my shoulder this time either. No, but. no, Matt's <laughs> not there. <laughs> Anything close, closer with um, with Chilean? Do you expect that one to be able to be completed before the weekend? How's how's that looking? Um, yeah, baby steps closer, but um, still not official. Well, you've spoken ever since you got here, really, about having two players per position um, yeah. that you want to be able to see competing for this shirt. You're, mm -hmm. you're probably not far off that now. Is it imperative that there's there's more business to do, or do you think you, you're not far off having having what you want in this squad? Um, we're getting closer, but but it's also it's not like we've got a you know bottomless pot of money to spend, you know. So, uh, and that's why I mentioned to have a few players who are versatile and can play in some different positions. Then it does give you um, a little bit more depth to the team without without having more numbers. But you know, every 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 decision we make is a difficult one because you know the level of the player has to be such as well that he um, he makes his team better. But I think, I, like, for having made so many decisions, important decisions, in such a short period of time with so little preparation, I thought that you know we've at least given ourselves a team to 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 look forward to work working with. Yeah. How difficult a balance is it for the those who aren't playing, who perhaps might have seen this season as an opportunity? I'm thinking of someone like Bailey Peacock Farrell, for example. How difficult is that as a manager to manage? those players who, who maybe know they're not going to get regular minutes no it's, it's not difficult at all this is you know it, it's, it's all I've known since I've been a player so um, you want to play in a good team then we need to have competition and you know everybody gets a chance to show it every single day in training and there's not nothing more to that just on the injury situation do you anticipate anyone who's not been available so far this season being available on Saturday or is it a case of waiting to yeah, I mean, we, we're seeing good progress of, of Johan Goodmanson. Um, we'll see if and when um, his time will come. Um, we're seeing good progress as well of, of Twiney and, and, and Kevin Long. And, um, you know, if, if we can keep the team fit, then, then soon we'll have more numbers anyway. Um, but we focus at the moment very much on those who have been available and, and, and we'll see when we can integrate the, um, the, the, the other players. Just, just on Scott Twine, I know it was mentioned briefly after the game on um, Tuesday night about what he can bring when, when fully fit. How do you sort of see his role in this, in this Burnley team? Do you see him playing forward as a, as a sort of main striker or do you anticipate him being more in that position just off the front? No, he, he can. He can play as a, as a striker, but it's, <clears throat> you know, he's a talented player, so talented players can do a few more things than, 
than other players usually and um you know he's he's really good at receiving between the lines which is done for mk dons he's really good at um playing off the shoulder as well which you know you could see in the game against Huddersfield where he put a few runs in behind as well but that's what clever players do and um right now we're prioritizing his recovery and and then from there I'm sure he'll have an important part to play for us how difficult a decision have you got on Saturday in terms of selection because you you left out Manuel Benson on in midweek you've got Nathan Teller I'm sure chomping at the bit to come in for his for his first start there's there's a lot of competition for places in those areas in particular yeah, but you know, it's like it gets these these things right now. It's it's as a coach, you just go with it. Sometimes you know, eventually someone scores a hat trick, and then it becomes a lot easier. You know, it's uh, but and it's not just about that. I think at this moment in time, there's there's really two two speeds you have to consider. Is one the dynamics of the group, which there's a part of the team who's been here for six, seven, eight. Well, by now, twelve weeks together, and training and understanding and 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 giving us as well the good parts that we've had this season so far. And and then there's a lot of new players who are coming in still with different ideas, different uh, approaches on certain things. And, you know, you've got to make sure you integrate them in, 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 in the right way. So um, having a look at now who plays and who doesn't play is, is there's a little bit more that comes into it at the moment than just like hey, he's a big name or he's going to know that they, they, they um, yeah, they're in a new league, they're in a new country. We have to just make sure that they're, they're ready when we put them in. We were speaking to Jack Cork earlier and he mentioned sort of being part of a leadership group that you'd, yeah. you'd sort of had a look at six or seven of the more experienced players. How important is that? And was that something you were keen to do when you came in to sort of have a, a little leadership group to, to help obviously the new arrivals? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any good leader that, that is a leader on his own. It's It's always shared leadership you can give the armband to one person and you can give the title to one person but um in general is you know shared is always shared leadership i mean you know suppose you have people doing the interviews people writing maybe uh doing doing the editing people you know just everybody has its own uh, qualities and usually the one who's shouting on the pitch is not the best at organizing a night out and and it's also part of our group lives together so you need different characters and um, and each and every one to be involved, yeah. Just last one for me on, on Dara Costello. Obviously, didn't feature on, on Tuesday, has featured. I don't think anyone sort of anticipated him being straight into the team this season. You've always seen a bit in him, in his performances and what he's been doing at training. Well, he's shown it himself, you know, that's how, made it easier. How, um, what was that sort of conversation like with him? Obviously, he's a young player, so he's he's going to expect to be in and out, I would imagine. How? Yeah. How did you sort of approach telling him he wasn't going to play? And, and have you seen it? Just work hard, keep going. Like, let's take one good thing about the Northwest, right? And just keep it simple. Just work hard, keep going. Well done, lad. And on to the next one. Simple. Thank you very much. Simple, yeah. All the best for Saturday. <laughs>